Yo, what's going on? This is Funk Case, and this is part two of my remix of Requiem. <laughs> So now we move on to the drop. Um, so I'll start with uh, my kick, my kick and the snares. Um, so one of my tricks for the kick is to, um, a lot of the old productions of mine didn't have a lot of click in the kicks, and, uh, in the kick, sorry. Um, and I kind of regret that because the kick is very important in part of the clarity of the, not only the clarity of the track, but in also in its presence within the track. So you can have the underweight of it, which is the oomph, and then you'll have the click, which is a, like, you know, the top hit. And together it sounds, like that and you can and that together helps being so you know it helps with the presence of the kick in the track to have that uh, initial initial snap at the top okay so you need to have um, a lot of breathing space in, dr in drum and bass compared to like dubstep where you can have quite long kicks and you can have quite long snares because um, there's room for it drum and bass is obviously a lot faster I'm running this at 174 BPM so there's not a, a lot of room for uh, the track to breathe um, so I've shortened the kick, the original kick, and I've shortened the snare itself. So the kick sounds like this. That's the original sound. So basically, I've got this, the Ox Sony Oxford Transmod Native. So basically, a short explanation of a transient is the initial hit, the very first snap of when it hits. So you can accentuate that by raising the ratio, like this. You see how the click is actually much louder. So I wanted to bring out the click a, a bit more <clears throat> and basically just, you know, have it a bit more present within the, uh, within the mix. And overshoot, again, is the same. It's how much transients uh, applied to it. You just play with those two and see what you can get out of it. Added EQ again. Um, a very strong boost here. Um, it's about... Wait, what is that? It's about 10 dB. So I didn't think the original kick of itself had uh, enough bass weight in it, so I've gone for a crazy 11 dB boost around uh, around 70 hertz, which is probably the lowest you can go as far as weight goes in DMB because the kicks in DMB aren't, aren't as powerful as, not nearly as powerful as dubstep. The general rule years ago when I was making uh, drum and bass only was that you couldn't really go below 80. But try and, times have changed mixed down wise and um, you know, with the inclusion of side chaining, uh, quite heavy side chaining, you can actually apply um, weighty kicks. Too weighty, you start dipping the sub too much and it sounds a bit muddy, so you know, you don't want to do that too much. And there's a nice chop out up to about 40 hertz onwards. <coughs> so sub will be hitting around here, and then this is where the initial bit boost is. And you can see the peak is here. And that peak is around between 70 and 80 dB. Uh, sorry, 70 and 80 hertz. <laughs> Amateur. Um, that's quite a widespread. I wanted to get the initial um, surrounding uh, weight from that low mid in there to make it pop. Same with this. There's a little boost there. There's a harmonic in there. You can, you can just hear that. Just to make it, you know, get that um, kick more popping. I actually watched. Um, a YouTube tutorial years ago, uh, Timberland doing a production thing, and he always said that if you want your kicks to stand out more, keep that pop in the kick. There's a cop, there's the initial low hit, there's the pop, and then there's the the, the transient clarity of the top of it. Um, and I always kind of stuck to that element just to make sure it's still there. You might not hear it in the mix, but it definitely does something for you know the, how penetrating it is in a mix. For this one, I don't tend to do this too often. I think I did this for a, more of an atmospheric reason. It just sits nicely in the track. I uh, just added a bit of reverb to the top of the hit. It's very soft, um, doesn't do a lot, but just something nice. Um, you know, if you can hear it hit on its own in a mix, it would just sound a bit, a bit dead. Because this track, when it hits originally, is quite minimal. <coughs> And then I've done some uh, post EQing again, just trying to penetrate more of the 70 dB, 80 dB region. Um, same with the pop there, and a bit more of the where the transient is. It sounds like this. Sounds poppy, sounds punchy, sits nicely in the mix. <laughs> Such a weird snare. So for the snare, I actually took the intro snare that from the stems that the guys gave me 
and uh, turn it into my own snare. Uh, so the EQing for this snare is uh, there's a lot of mid side going on. Um, if you use Fabfilter Pro Q2, this is one of the greatest things you'll ever learn to do. Um, so initially, the hit of the snare is here, but I haven't boosted it. I think it's quite penetrating enough. Um, don't really need to do anything with it. The only thing I have removed is that you don't really want any low mids to pass um, wide in the mix, like I mentioned earlier. Um, this one hits at about 300, I think. Oh, wait. This one passes at 350. Um, so usually you could send it to the sides, but I think it would sound quite weird and unnatural to have um, that initial hit to be hitting at the sides of the mix. <clears throat> so I've removed that from the sides uh, by 3-ish three, three dB, and then um, again, it's all preferential, you don't have to do anything um, you know, by the book, just do what sounds good for the track. Um, I've ra raised the presence of it, pretty much the same in each. Um, you just adjust the side and the mid as you need to for the track, and uh, a bit more clarity for the tops. And then I've layered the snare with uh, a snare sample here, which I've basically just removed all the bottom snare from. I just like the tail of this snare itself, just to put underneath it, so it sounds like this, on its own. So I like the, I like the sound it gives it. I like a nice uh, tail on a snare, it sounds more natural that way. And then just lay the clap onto that. This is probably a clap I would have used in dubstep. Um, very short one though. Um, I'm a big fan of putting claps over snares. So for the EQ on the clap, um, just so it doesn't sound too um, intrusive of you know the main snare hit. I've just passed that up to about 250 hertz ish and it rolls up to 500. And then I've added a multi bank um, distorter, but I use it as a, an EQ as well. Basically removed everything up to 480 hertz. Again, preferential. This is there's no set way you would do that. I wouldn't go. Oh, I need to do that at 480. Just do it to what sounds good. I think it sounded good from there. Again, just a, a 6 dB boost on the, the mids because every, you know the tops come from the accompanying snare layer and the clap needs to be a bit more mid. As a mod to the track to keep it, you know, you need to keep your track interesting to listen to. Um, so always do things, um, you know, to add to it because your, your ears will always pick that up. You can always, it's so easy to be bored of music these days. Um, so I've added actually the, a, a snare, it's a metal snare. quite unclean in itself but I've only really boosted the harmonics of the actual metal part of the hit and give it a bit more clarity and removed all of the bottoms out of it. So you can see the difference that makes. <coughs> and again just widened it just so it sits and you can hear it better in the mix. If I had this mono you probably wouldn't be able to hear it as much. I'd probably have to turn it up louder um, and then it would start you know everything starts fighting for places in a, in a mix so that's why it's good to spread to the sides. And together, it sounds like this. So they're all basically playing in the same key. Um, again, do the thing with the keyboard. Find out the key of the of the track. Play it. Match your your snares to it. Your your snare layer. Your clap and your anything else like a ringing metal snare like that. So the main bass uh, synth element of the track is sounds like this. It's that triplet da -da 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 noise. So for this, uh, I drew for Sugar Bite Cyclop. It's quite a weird synth. Uh, I discovered it while I was on tour in 2013. Um, I had an email from Sugar Bites, because Sugar Bites do a Fetrix. And obviously when you purchase something from Sugar Bites, you get emails for new products and stuff. Um, so I got an email for Cyclop, and uh, I thought, why not? I might as well play with it. I've got free time. I'm traveling on the road. I'm doing nothing for hours until the next city. So I drew for this, and uh, I played through all of the um, the presets going through it. And there was one preset here called Chirpies. You can also do a really cool thing on this called uh, Randomizer, where you press the dice, and it just changes all of these randomly, and just names it weirdly. Um, and you get some really strange sounds out of it. So the original sound of this one sounds like this. Sounds rubbish, absolutely rubbish. I don't know why I chose it, I think, um, I probably did another preset and did loads of work to it and then played through the presets. Sometimes if you put a lot of effects like uh, distorters, EQs and things on that, 
and play around. And you, if you think those you know, distortions are good enough, just play around with the presets and maybe you'll find one that you like and just edit it. And you'll, you'll make a new sound out of it and it'll sound cool. To, to get something sounding that to that is obviously a good feat. So um, always play around with uh, your options. You don't always have to find a patch and then work on it. You can always do pre-effects and then load up a patch and then see how it sounds with that. So to start off, I've added a camel crusher to this. This is one of my favorite distortions. It's very simple, um, but very critical if you need it to be. Um, I use it for most of my um, synth, actually. Uh, sometimes I'll draw for my, um, I've got the guitar distortions. I've got a Bosch GT3 and a Line 6 pod. Um, sometimes I'll run my synths outboard and then back into itself and play around with the distortions on there because they're a lot more fun to play with. But uh, ideally, if I'm trying to work quick, which I did on this one, this is a remix. I had a time frame I needed to work to. Um, I drew for Camel Crusher and uh, I turned on Annihilate and then just play with the settings, really. Um, tube is the amount of distortion. Mech is how critical the distortion is. So if you play around with those two, usually those are your favourites. If you turn Fat Mode off as well, you can, it'll, be, it'll be less powerful um, as a distortion. So as you can hear, it goes from simple. Just crunches it nicely, gives it more aggression. It's one thing to note on Cubase, actually, that uh, when you're doing layers, top is the first layer, and the next layers on are essentially what's going to go over it. So the order of uh, the layers are actually very important. If I was to do this EQ, like this, and swap them over, it would do the EQ, and then it would, that would uh, distort the EQ that I've just done. So always have your uh, layers in specific orders. If you think something's not working, do something before. So like, let's say you don't want to distort the lows of this, of this thing. You pre-EQ the lows out of it, put the distorter on it, and then do another EQ after the distorter, and then you can um, you know, make it sound how you want it to sound. Oh, glitchy. So for this, as you can see in the analyzer here, there's actually just uh, a lot of sub in there which I had to get rid of. Um, I've chopped this out down to what the analyzer says, so I trust the analyzer on this case. So that's rolling off quite nicely, keeping a lot of the low mids in there, you know, keeping it warm. Um, and then just a lot of a lot of weird adjustments to the mids up and down. I'm not quite sure why, I don't know if I should explain that. And then just a, a nice spread boost into the clarity. And you can see all the rings are there, you, can, you don't really have to touch those. And as an EQ, it's pretty generally quite flat, as you can see there. And it just rolls off itself, so it's quite a clean sound as it is, so I didn't really need to do a lot of um, passing on low or high, so just make it nice and, clar uh, nice and clear. Again, Cubase is stereo enhancer, but I actually initially thought this uh, had too much of a spread originally, um, so I've had to tone down the widening. So obviously 100 on on the uh, stereo enhancer is the original value. And, it, and you can see on this, it's actually showing you how wide it's going. It's going beyond pretty much what, how much I'd want. Unless you really want that width, which I, it depends. It depends on the producer on what you want from the sound. But personally, I thought it was too wide and I wanted to bring it in a little bit, make it sound more together with the track. So I brought it down to 64. You can just make this a lot easier just by typing it in. And then you can see it's not actually breaching the very edge of the of the stereo image. But it's still wide. You can hear the mono nice and clearly. Then once again, I've drawn for reverb, uh, our verb on waves. You can just about hear what it's doing. Um, nothing too extreme, just a little bit in the background. Again, for my own personal OCD, if I know it's dry, then I'll, my brain will start tweaking. Again, personal preference. Um, you don't need to do too much to it. Then I've added this multi-band multi -band distorter. Um, again, FabFilter Saturn, FabFilter, some of the best plugins I've, I've used. Um, I was uh, recommended FabFilter by Noisier, um, personally. Um, and if Noisier tell you something, you listen. <laughs> so uh, you go for that. Um, just a few little boosts and removals here and there. Um, so you can change the type, types of distortions throughout the bands by clicking on the band and then choose a layout. Just for this one though, I just wanted to just uh, you know gently adjust the different ranges and uh, just to get how it sounds. So the next noise is uh, actually one I got from the stems uh, called Drop Main Synth. Oh, bip. 
that's what they named the stem. Um, didn't really need to do too much to it, but I really like the sound, so I wanted to bring that into the track. Um, so again, I drew for Camel Crusher, pretty much the same settings as the other one. Spread it very intensely because um, this is the sort of uh, this is a, a very Skrillexy sound. And Skrillex does a lot of wide um, production when it comes to these sort of sounds, so I thought I'd sort of aim for that for that vibe with it. Very nice and wide, but the, the monos are maintained very well. And once again, I've not done too much, just chopped the rumble out, a um, bit more low mids to, to warm it up, and uh, about 4,000 hertz spread just for the presence. Okay, so next, uh, put the sub in. Obviously, every track needs sub. Um, Again, not, probably not anything that anyone doesn't really know, but I'll just show you up there. So for this bass, um, I wanted a harmonic bass to come through because I've got quite a, a, a thin synth. Um, there's not a lot of lows in it. So you need to accompany it with a nice underneath your sub. So for this trick, I have the sine square on oscillator one, um, and I put it all the way to square. And then you get the intensity. See, as you, as you turn up the intensity, you can actually hear the harmonic passing through more and more. I've only got the intensity up a little bit. You can hear that <laughs> underneath. Just a nice, nice for warmth, really. A, go, a, good, um, a good tone passes through very cleanly um, and just accompanies everything very nicely. I've got this side chain using uh, FabFilter Pro C with the kick and the snare. So... Um, I tend to talk a lot about production with uh, artists when I play at shows. So uh, I was with a show uh, at a show with Metric actually, um, talking to him about side chaining, and he told me he never really goes past minus six as a natural sounding um, <coughs> side chain. Anything below minus six, minus seven, you start hearing the sub dip. You could probably hear it dip at minus six, but it's very clean. It sounds very natural. It doesn't sound like it's doing too much to the sub. So uh, for me, that's probably what I draw for uh, when it comes to dubstep or drum and bass. You can go further, dubstep especially, it's good to make a funk actually using the sub, dipping in and out, sucking back in and everything like that. But uh, just for this one, I wanted a quick um, kick and snare dip, just so that kick and snare passes through the sub much better. Same as the last sub I did, I just removed all the pop from it and keep it clean. <laughs> So once again, edits are very important in the tracks. Um, for this edit here, I've got two basses. Uh, one which sounds very weird on its own. Kind of strange, very flat, not much to it. Um, they're drawn from my old friends, Dimension Expander for the width. And I've basically just raised the clarity massively because it was so flat. Um, yeah, it was too flat. So I basically just had a massive, a massive boost. 27 dB is a lot. You wouldn't normally do that, but it's that flat, it needed it. So you can hear the difference, really. It doesn't sound taxing to the ear, it doesn't, doesn't hurt your ear to listen to it or anything like that. And again, just a boost around 150, like I mentioned earlier, really good for the low mids. So for this noise, again, it's a, it's a Reese sample in the sample pack, same as the one from the intro. Um, it's actually a different noise. Again, true for Camel Crusher. This time I've used Tube Warmth uh, with a little bit of uh, tube distortion there just to keep it clean. Turn the compressor off because that's what essentially what gives it the main aggression. Um, when, when twinned with the distortion. <laughs> the original sound is actually this. Kind of weird. So I apply Camel Crusher. A little bit more aggression. Sound shifter again, just automated the pitch on it to bend down and up. Like so. Again, uh, another low mid boost for the harmonics on the low ends. Same with the, the mids at the top, and remove the top. Again, if you, you're working with the Reese, you want that presence of the mid, and you also want that low mid to part through, pass through. I've actually automated the uh, low mids on this, so that when it does bend up and down, uh, the, the low mids doesn't actually go too intense and starts distorting in a mix. <laughs> oh. 
I've then added more uh, EQing to this. Um, again, just raising, because it's playing on its own with nothing else, no sub, I've raised the sub up on that one. Um, chopped out some of the harmonics there because it's something, just, you know, to keep it clean, you've got to listen out for that. Same with the mids, it's a Reese, do the mids and then just a bit more on the clarity. Um, and there was a very piercing um, high mid, so I decided to remove that to make it cleaner. Okay, for the next element, uh, a very old school uh, techie drum and bass trick um, to use Waves Meta Flanger. Just applies that really cool phase um, flange to it. This is going quite subtly here, as you can see by the modulation, but you can make this go all kinds of crazy. This button here is really good. If you use this, you can spread the stereo on the flange. I've got this at about 150. Again, drawing for cue bases, um, stereo enhancer. Again, just a 100 was the default value, doesn't do anything, so I boosted it up a little bit just to give it a bit more width, just something I wanted more of as a preference. True for sat fab filter satin for the uh, multi band distortion. Again, this was just really just to boost up and clean around uh, a lot of the lows. Um, I like the distortion and how clean this is, um, so I always draw for it when I want to do something that can't be bothered to do on EQing. <laughs> I also automate, again, it's a Reese, so I wanted to automate the presence of the mids. Um, so I've got this distortion band here. This actually goes up as it opens up, like so. Just give it a cool effect. And then, just as a, as a weird thing to do, basically, something you can always do, be experimental in the way you work. Um, I've got Cubase's chopper again, um, and I've got it basically just automating through different speeds, and it kind of works. Makes it bouncy, sounds kind of strange. It works in the mix though. So, for the initial drop, to keep that minimal uh, feel to it after having such an epic intro and an epic build up, um, I decided not to put any hi hats in the, in the drop itself. Which I think works. It's quite a strange approach. Um, not a lot of tracks do it. Someone will always put a hi hat in, even if it's just like t t t t just to accompany it. Uh, I chose not to, and then to bring it in after uh, 16 bars. Um, again, something to do with make, keeping it um, interesting to listen to when it comes in. So it goes from none. <laughs> Just accompanies the whole track pretty well. So underneath the da -da 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 noise, um, I've decided to add a bit of grit to keep it interesting to listen to. Um, actually made this on Serum. Uh, once again, big up Expert Records. You absolutely smashed this. Um, so I bounce this out, <clears throat> but it's just an under grit noise. Sounds kind of strange, but when you play it in the mix, it sounds great. Adds a bit of grit to the mix, and then underneath the, the high reese that I had earlier, decided to add one of my own wants. Um, this is also bounced out from from Massive. This is a classic funk case womp. just to you know make it a bit more warmer when it when it plays. Can't really hear it too prominently, but it sounds really good in the mix as a as something else to add to the mix. Um, again, so keeping into the theme of um, keeping things interesting, um, I've put in that recognisable Game Boy sort of uh, riff that they put into the stems, um, mixed with Kate Mullins singing, big up Kate by the way, and smashed it. And now it goes into the switch. So the first noise, um, this is more about what you do into the inserts of the noise as opposed to how I made the, the synth itself. The synth is actually just... So just go do it. Sounds rubbish on its own. Um, just a lot of playing around really. This is again removing the bottoms, anything from the middle to make it cleaner and the clarity. Camel Crusher again. Love the distortion from Cram Crusher so it works so well. So already it sounds a lot cleaner and a bit more aggressive. And then I use this tool. Um, this is called LFO tool. This is by Exfer as well. Um, really amazing piece of kit. You can do all kinds of uh, LFO loops with it. This one actually has a filter on the LFO itself. <coughs> so 
So it turns it from a simple dirt -dirt into a wall, which is ob obviously made my life a lot easier when it comes to making the, making the base. I've also added, again, the chopper from Cubase that comes with Cubase. Um, just made it wobble a little bit, really, just to give it a, another effect. If it goes, whoa, 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 then it goes on that. I did Meta Flanger again from Waves. Just uh, again, it's that techy feeling that you get with like Noisia or anyone of that of that style. Um, they use a lot of phasing. Just it just gives it that cool robot sound. Again, when I mentioned about the the, the order of the layers uh, of Camel Crushed, everything underneath. So the Camel Crush is also obviously above everything else. So it's basically crushing all of those layers. Just adds a bit more grit to the to the mix, really. The width of serum is actually uh, something I'm a fan of and not a fan of. Um, when you're using unison on serum, if you're making a base, it makes everything so wide, almost too wide, it's hard to fit it within a track. There's a lot of producers who do that really well these days, like Must I, Virtual Riot. Um, but I myself, I don't like that much width. It's, it, to me, it's, um, it's, not, it's almost, almost not nice to listen to, to have so much width uh, going on with a base. So I just toned it down again with the stair enhancer from 100 the original value, brought it down to 72. And then just add very gentle uh, reverb again, same thing as I did on the main bass really, just something to give it a little bit of atmosphere. Um, if you heard it on its own, you can hear the reverb. When it plays in the mix, you can't hear it, but again, it's something from you know, my, own, my own OCD. So the next bass um, is very Dillinger um, inspired. Um, he's probably my favorite producer. Um, some uh, the guy I idolised from when I started making music up until still today. Um, I love the old school stabs he used to do with his basses, and uh, I wanted to emulate that. And there's a there's a really cool preset on Serum that actually does that, so I thought I'd work on that. So I didn't actually like the initial um, the initial first part of it. It goes tan tan and it's and it's too much of that. Um, so instead of uh, playing with the attack. Um, in the in the serum itself, I basically just added uh, a transient shaper and just removed that initial. Thing so it wasn't as powerful. And you can see there it's dipping it, but it does it live. So it'll only do the ones that are the most extreme, which I kind of like. So uh, yeah, once again, drawing for Camel Crusher, nothing too exciting there. <laughs> Great information. Um, I want your camel crush it on the second layer as opposed to um, crushing after I've EQ'd it because I wanted it to actually crush the sub with it, which is what gives it that initial um, very crunched, um, overpowered sound. So I EQ'd after, after the camel crusher um, to make it cleaner but still have that crushed sound. As you can see in the mix there, the bass is very powerful there, so I had to take all that out. But that's what's being crushed that initially. If you EQ'd out that, that sub, it probably wouldn't sound like this. It would probably sound a bit more like a saw wave, and that's a bit too typical for me. Again, just a boost on the uh, on the mids, um, just to bring them out a bit more present. Same with the clarity at the top there. Again, um, even though I've tamed the whips a bit a bit on the dimension expander, I wanted to spread it a little bit more using the stereo enhancer there. Again, not going too wide with the uh, with that, just controlling it, but still having that clean width and maintaining mono signal. So for the switch here, I've just added um, a bunch of shakers and hi hats and percussions. I wanted to make the drums uh, a lot more techy in this bit and a bit more typical. So a very typical, very fast shaker going in the background. Um, I've actually added a left and a right hi-hat of two different types. Um, this is kind of to give the effect of a, of a more of a shuffle rather than a very typical hi-hat. But they're not panned specifically all the way left and all the way right. I've actually uh, panned them only 50% to left and the rights. Uh, this is because it maintains the mono signal uh, in each side and keeps the volume. I also like adding very metallic um, styles of um, hi-hats and percussions, just because they have a really cool sound. 
So for this one, I've got one playing um, louder than the other. So this one, as you can see, plays louder than that one. And I do this by changing the gains in the middle of each one. So when you go to the top here, you'll see this block. And you better um, raise and lower the volume, and this is actually the gain. Um, and I've actually got one playing at one semitone up, semitone up, and I've got the second one playing at its original value. No specific reason, but again, it's just a cool edit. Sounds pretty cool with the rest of the, of the mix. For the next hi-hat, it's a very typical hi-hat, but very spread. Um, it's spread already by itself. I haven't actually had to do anything with this one. Um, but it just passes through the, the mix a lot better, as the other ones are very uh, mono and things like that. And the same with this one, very typical hi-hat. Sounds a bit more like a, like a tambourine or a shuffler, but it just sits underneath this hat well. Gives it a bit, bit more body to the sound. Of course, percussive uh, shuffles are always the best way to um, really bring out the mix. You couldn't have 20 hi-hats doing all different things and different patterns because there's only, there's only so much it will do in the mix um, for the body. So I've actually found um, a pre-shuffle um, and I've cut it up and taken two of, the, of my favourite noises and I've basically just put them into these shuffles here. So if you hear that with a click. So it's actually with the offbeat. Um, so when everything else is hitting, gives it a really cool pattern. Underneath that one, I've put an off, uh, another offbeat hit. Um, it's actually a, uh, a wood percussive instrument. Underneath the shuffle, it sounds like this. And with all the hi-hats. Again, just makes the, the rhythm very driving, very, uh, very technical, very shuffly. Uh, underneath all of that, I've put a, an offbeat um, percussion that's very, um, very low midi, just to give it a bit more body for the whole mix. Because there's not really anything else that will be um, playing in that region, and it's something you just, you know, you need to cover all bases when it comes to the range of the EQ. So played all together. You can just about here, it really accompanies it very well. These percussions here, these are all just uh, bongos and stuff. This is all from the stems of the original. I liked how that sounded, so I've just put that in with the mix. So when you play live drums, you obviously um, you'll, you'll switch between playing a closed hi hat and open hi hat. So for this one, uh, I've included an open hi hat, but I didn't really couldn't really find an uh, uh, an open hi hat that was long enough. So I had to stretch it. Um, by itself, sounds kind of weird. It sounds like it's been time stretched, but in the mix, you can't really hear it. But once you have all the elements in there, it uh, kind of masks it really. And then as a final addition to the hi-hats, this is a <coughs> another another mid hi-hat. But this is a very um, DMB uh, pattern, as it were. So if you have this one playing, you'd have these as an offbeat in between the kick and the snare. So the kick would be there, and the snare would be there. So you hear it like this. And it just fills out the holes, really. You need to fill all the holes when it comes to um, picking the hi-hats in all the percussives. So obviously, uh, building a track is all about layers and filling it out. Um, so obviously, I have all the drums and have the, dr and the sub and the synths playing, but obviously, you need to do more. You need to have just a little bit more just to fill it out to give that energy. So at the moment, I have a sample of the man called saying deadly. Deadly, 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 deadly. Very simple, but um, this is a very easy way of uh, filling things out. A lot of people like trap artists will have like a, a hip hop gang going hey or something like that. You know, it just it just how you use it. Um, just for, but for this one, I've got deadly on every bar. 
and then I have um, a sample of a horror. Again, it's, there's no real reason, there's, there's no right or wrong way to fill out a track, just, just fill the elements really, and I, I thought um, a cheeky little horror sample in the background would fill it out quite nicely. Uh, more edits. Um, basically just made the horror noise a lot louder as this is a, an em more empty bit. I haven't played any basses um, in this section actually. Um, so this is just an edit, just to keep the th thing interesting. Um, it's this mixed with um, a guy saying, you're not human, but in a weird sort of choppy way. You are not human, you're, you're human. Sounds kind of weird, but it works in the mix um, when you play it all together. You are not human, you're, you're human. Again, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do things. Um, it's just something I thought would be really cool in the edit. I had it in my head that I wanted to make this weird sort of Godzilla style noise. So I, um, I was going through effects noises and I found this. It's, it sounds weird as hell, but um, I thought maybe if I crushed it and did all the EQing to that stuff, it'd make it sound like this. And it sounds like a synth I've made. So uh, it's always fun to um, go out of the box when it comes to what you make. You don't always have to go, I'm going to try and make this a massive or serum or anything else. You can always just find an effects noise and then play with that and mess with it. Because I've always done that throughout all my productions. Um, one of my old tracks, Gorilla Flex, is actually there's no basses in it. It's all effects noises distorted and played with. Um, and yeah, fun fact. And then to keep the theme interesting again, I wanted to switch into um, triplets. Um, very old school DMV trick. Subfocus has used it, original syntax man. It's a, it's a very typical thing. Um, Pendulum have used it as well. Um, just gives it a bit of bounce, a bit more of a funk. So instead of the usual hi hat pattern, which would be one, two, three, four, it would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it sounds like this. So I've basically, just taken all the hi hats from, from the original um, drum riff and just put them into triplets and uh, changed the riff into that. As I draw this uh, drop to a close, I, I bring it down to the breakdown, which most people will probably um, copy the whole thing over, uh, move it across, and then you've got the intro playing again. Which you know is these days it's it's, it's hard to um, know what to do with your track. Do you do another section? Will people hear it? A lot of people get bored of tracks these days, they'll skip it after two and a half minutes of listening to it or whatever. I myself, I, I just like to carry on with the track and just make it into a track, you know, it can't, it can't just be that twice over, otherwise that's just lazy. Um, works for some producers, uh, some producers love doing that, some people like hearing that, but for myself, um, I like to take it that extra mile, just for my own, you know, for my own production pride. So I had to transition this track now from, the, uh, from that last drop, take it out and into this. Um, again, my favourite trick of putting a, a cinematic boom into it. Very simple trick, but it works so good. So for this bit, I didn't want to be very typical and just um, take the intro and just fade it in with like a, a, a low pass or something. So I actually physically played um, two chords in, in key with the track, um, just to give it another element really. It's just a, again, it's just keeping, that, keeping the listener interested. So again, I drew from my friend, the Juno DI. Um, I couldn't tell you what preset I used, but um, played it like this. And just looped over. And then for that, I just EQ'd it. So it gives it a bit more clarity. A nice bit of reverb just for the atmosphere. And then just a DJM filter again, bringing it in from the low pass. Again, all about the atmosphere for this track, really. And that's twinned with the stems from the original track, these ops just coming in. Again, fading in using the fader tool on the on Cubase here. Same again, adding the low, low underneath. So all the elements together sound like this. And then once again, bringing in my friend the Juno, Juno DI over here. Um, using in the same synth preset. Just wanted to give it that spacey feeling really. Again, just to keep it interesting to listen to. Just 
stab it, adding a, uh, more reverb just to set the atmosphere, a bit of delay, just to, you know, just to give it a bit more width, um, just to set into the mix. And then once again, all about keeping the listener interested, I could have gone back into the original drop. Um, I elected not to. Um, I basically just changed up the, the riff um, and made a drum step pattern. Um, when I first played this live, I was nervous that people wouldn't like it. This almost went off harder than the original drop, actually. Um, so yeah, I decided to keep it when I first tested it out. One of my favorite tricks is to take one of my kicks and then uh, time stretch it over the a quarter of a bar. So it sounds like this. Basically, you just time stretch it and reverse it. And then you would, on, on Cubase, you would just take this and you would just fade it in. Just sounds kind of cool when it hits like this. Annihilation. Just a cool edit. Again, no right or wrong, but it just is, you know, keeping the listener interested. Annihilation. Drums are just hitting on uh, a half time to what they were usually doing, so it's doom, 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 doom. So it's almost hip hoppy. And then just uh, running with a different pattern on the synth. Very simple pattern, but runs with the original theme of how the drops um, start. But uh, yeah, just, just modded basically for, the, for interesting listening. Layout is much the same as the uh, as the first drop. <coughs> but, uh, yeah. And it's very much the same for the switch. Really, the original switch goes into a halftime version of the switch. So it's just the same basses, really, just in different patterns. Um, again, keeping the interesting listening. And then just cheekily bringing it back into the triplets. I tried the triplets um, drum step. It sounded kind of weird, actually, so I wasn't really a fan of it. So I just thought I'd randomly bring in the, uh, the triplet drum bass as it was. Which it would be so easy to do. I just thought I'd add one or one more little element to it, just to you know, just to bring you down from instead of just going and then just stopping with the lay. It's very easy to do that. It sounds fine as it was, but um, I just wanted to add a new element to it really, uh, and I just had this riff. Just uh, place twice over and then. Uh, and I made that on my Juno DI. Once again, um, just over distorted the patch within the keyboard. And uh, yeah, tops off the tune nicely. All right, that wraps up my studio session. Um, big ups for watching, and uh, I hope you've learned something. And uh, yeah, peace out.